Hello fellow knights and ladies of the realm, and welcome back to the channel. We are in business again after completion of my 30 mod slot load order, and boy oh boy, we have some wild mods in store for you all today. But before we get into today's video, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring that notification bell to be notified of more content like this. We'd love to help you mod your Skyrim a whole lot, so much that we've even designed a Discord server just for you. So why not stop on by and say hello on over at our Xbox Paradise. Our first mod that we will be reviewing is Monster Armor by Clofus. Coming in at about 6.4 megabytes, you can craft this really cool armor set under the Daedric category and the weapons under the Ebony section. What's cool about these armors and weapons is that they don't require any perk points to craft a single piece, which is really good for those who already have the materials for the set but don't want to waste those precious perk points. The armor set comes in both male and female variations, which is perfectly balanced. On top of that, the armor makes taking down your enemies look satisfyingly good, running around as a behemoth, bringing the smack down to your foes. You know, monster armor really makes me feel out of this world. So we have just the thing for that, which is Hubble Night Skies Part 1, 2, and 3 by Squeezy. With these separate mods installed, they are going to transform your night skies into that of pure galaxies, ranging from a clustered galaxy, double rows, and even gas clouds. The best part about this mod is that each of them come with HD stars, which really makes you want to drop everything you're doing for a moment and just stargaze. From monster armors to skies, and now to clear UI. That's right, clear UI, ported on over by Daddy McHuge Nuts. What? Yes, that is his name. With this mod installed, you get really easy to read UI, brand new weight menu interface, which allows you to change the frequencies by pressing down the left stick to change between days and hours, and the right stick to change the increments. The UI looks slick and really fun to use. On top of that, you can also place this UI right below Scry UI, which is a mod I reviewed not too long ago, and read the benefits of both of these amazing UI replacements, which is absolutely amazing, as I know some may not enjoy having their enemy health bars removed by scry ui and now the moment you all have been waiting for skse for skyrim on xbox come on you guys know i was just kidding right Yes, sadly, we will never actually have SKSC on Xbox due to it being a separate program. However, we can definitely spice up our kill moves with a samurai style. To do this, you must have Violin's mod installed and then placed SKSC directly below it for compatibility. Next, you must make sure that the kill moves are set to customized and then head on over to the customized section and click on disabled kill moves. This will allow you to select specific kill moves you would like to see when defeating your opponent. We are going to select Bash, Trip, Slash, and after that, enjoy this really cool cinematic samurai kill move. The final mod of today is going to be Busty Skavers by DMHN. However, we will be breaking down this mod in segments in today's video so that it is easy to digest and that no one gets confused. Also, it is mentioned in the description to place this mod in the Foundations category. Now to get started, you will be greeted with a book called Skeevers in your inventory. This is going to house your configurations for the mod here on out. Once you open the book, you will have access to third person camera, adaptive camera, display settings, gameplay settings, performance, hand of folly, and presets. Let's take a look at third person skiver. Make sure that you are satisfied with your changes and to toggle on the feature. Otherwise the settings you have changed will not save. Third person skiver will allow you to change how you view your character in third person, as the name implies. However, you can also change the height of your character in the idle position, change your melee and range position, and even a swim fix, which will allow you to center the camera while swimming and allow you to draw your weapon out when exiting the water. If you don't like any of these changes you have made, you can also revert back to vanilla. Adaptive Skeever will allow you to change your crosshair pop-ups, either when wielding a weapon, doing archery, or casting spells. You can even set it to where when you talk to an NPC, you will go from third person to first, which I think is really cool and is a callback to those Oblivion days. 
Display Skiver will first ask if you want to pause the game briefly after settings change to have a clear view. I hit yes to this. In this section, you have a contrast fix, shadow fix, and a snow fix, which only adjust shader settings for snow and works well with the new Better Dynamic Snow mod, along with other projected snow. It lets you really dial in the snow a bit. There is also a field of view change, much like in Dynamic Camera, the depth of field view, which blurs out the background so that you can focus on an object like in real life. A softening feature, which is really cool, as it adds in a fantasy-like feeling. And finally, you can change the interior lighting of towns and dungeons, which is an amazing feature. I've been using this with Tenebros, and I haven't experienced a single issue. With changing the contrast or interior lighting of taverns, this is a huge game changer. Gameplay Skiver allows you to modify the alchemy percentages you can get for faster leveling. Or if you don't like this feature, you can toggle that off. You can also modify the attack speed, which may not work with some mods. There is also an advanced version of head tracking, which when set to max and combat tracking is enabled, this will make it feel like we finally have a lock on mechanic without having to press a button to swap between enemies. Other than that, we also have effects cleaner. Before you use this mod, however, you must make a fresh save. This section adds in in Spell Genie, which will allow you to remove spells and bottle them up for whenever you are ready to use them again, which is perfect for organization purposes. If you have vanilla effects that get stuck, you can use Remove Typical or Remove Eye Mods. That will get rid of any unwanted vanilla effects. This can, however, take some time, so please be patient. There is also a sound loop fix that will remove any annoying repeating sounds. For example, if you picked up a flower and you heard the flower get picked up more than once, this will fix it. If all of this is too much for you, you can just hit remove all option, which I personally don't recommend doing, but you can definitely do that and still be fine. It will just take some time. The last thing to mention here is that there is a section called Pocket Alduin. It would literally place Alduin in your pocket. If you drop Pocket Alduin, he will fall through the ground, and when you get into combat, it will rain destruction, killing enemies, NPCs, and even yourself. I, uh... I don't know why you would want to do this, but yeah, that's an option for you. Performance Skiver is an experimental section which seeks to improve your gameplay performance. You do have the option for potato mode, which I'm sure my friend Olan would love, but this will reduce some visual quality in exchange for more performance and can come in handy if you're running a older Xbox or perhaps you have a lot of mods going on in your world. The last performance module covered in location-based performance, which disables certain effects found in Falkreath, Windhelm, and Riften. I know a lot of people there love performance mods and experience lag in these locations. And when using this module, I have experienced absolutely zero lag in these areas, which is really good. Finally, the last section to cover is Hand of Folly, which when activated, it will grant you a power in your inventory called Scrying Glass. With this power, you can closely zoom in on an object, NPC, town, item, you name it. This feature is really good for when you are wanting to take amazing screen captures, or perhaps you are doing a YouTube video like me and want to zoom in on the action taking place. I know this is quite a lot to cover, and if I miss something or if you need more help with this mod, please don't be afraid to drop a comment down below or join us in our growing Discord server. We have a ton of great individuals there that would be ready to help you at a moment's notice. All right, that's going to be it for me today. I hope you all have enjoyed today's video. Don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more content like this. Other than that, here's to a happy Skyrim and to many more adventures.